Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Wednesday, February 24th, and from an updated timeline on our stimulus checks to when we could be getting more of the coronavirus vaccine, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop tonight. But who else is enjoying all of this wonderfully warm weather? Will it continue? Well, let's get a look at our forecast with our first alert weather team. Oh, you can let go and indulge in it today. It's called spring fever and so far the high in Toledo 49 degrees is possible. Maybe in between hours the temperature just touched 50 and that report will come in a little bit later on. Uh, but go ahead, immerse yourself in spring fever. And even though tomorrow it's going to be a colder day, it's near normal. There should be a fair amount of sunshine and even 36 is going to feel great. Friday, the high will bounce back up to 44. And talking about the weekend, it looks more and more like if it does rain, it's going to be late Friday night, early Saturday morning. If you see a chance of rain on Saturday, maybe when you're flipping through on the internet, don't worry about it right now. It looks like it'll be really early in the morning. So plans for Saturday, midday and afternoon look really good. And Sunday uh, looks great as well with a high temperature of 46 Sunday around 50 on Saturday. And even though the coronavirus curfew has been gone in Ohio for weeks, business isn't exactly booming in the state's restaurants. The Ohio Restaurant Association took a survey of some of its members and 72% said the curfew had little to no effect on their business. But 21% of restaurants did say they can now seat another round of tables. John Barker, the association's president and CEO, says customers are still getting out of old habits, meaning people have really become accustomed to those earlier hours and really just staying home. But here is some good news. The Ohio Restaurant Association says that for many businesses, Valentine's Day weekend was the best weekend business-wise since the fall. And here's another bit of good news. The Ohio Investigative Unit says that since the curfew was lifted, they haven't really seen any new problems popping up. But it should be remembered that bars can still be cited for breaking other COVID-19 regulations. For instance, last weekend, Chevy's place in downtown Toledo was cited when agents said they saw about 100 people not properly distanced. But one agent said these types of violations are few and far between, especially because some bar owners are still choosing to operate under restricted hours. Now, the curfew has been gone for two weeks, but it could always be reinstated if hospitalizations were to spike again. But those numbers have been on a downward trend for weeks now. And Johnson & Johnson's single-dose COVID-19 vaccine offers strong protection against severe COVID-19, according to an analysis by U.S. regulators, setting the stage for a final decision on a new and easier-to-use shot. FDA scientists confirm that overall the vaccine is about 66% effective at preventing moderate to severe COVID-19 and about 85% effective against the most serious illness. The agency also said J&J's shot, one that could help speed up vaccinations by requiring just one dose instead of the usual two, is safe to use. But that's just one step in the FDA's evaluation of a third vaccine option for the U.S. On Friday, the agency's independent advisors will debate if the evidence is strong enough to recommend it. And armed with that advice, the FDA is expected to make a final decision within days. The vaccination drive has been slower than hoped, hampered by logistical issues and weather delays, even as the country mourns more than 500,000 virus-related deaths. So far, about 44.5 million Americans have received at least one dose of the vaccine made by Pfizer or Moderna, and nearly 20 million of them have received a second dose required for full protection. But vaccinations could be ramping up soon. Vaccine makers told Congress yesterday that we can expect a big jump in the delivery of doses over the coming month, and the companies insist they'll be able to provide enough for most Americans to get their shots by summer. By the end of March, Pfizer and Moderna expect to have provided the U.S. government with a total of 220 million vaccine doses, which is a big leap from the roughly 75 million shipped so far. And that's not including the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. President Joe Biden's team said yesterday they expect about 2 million doses of that vaccine to be shipped in the first week. But the company told lawmakers it should be able to have enough doses for 20 million people by the end of March. Now, looking toward the summer, Pfizer and Moderna expect to deliver 300 million doses each. Johnson & Johnson is looking to provide an additional 100 million doses, and that would be more than enough to vaccinate every American adult. Plus, two other manufacturers, Novavax and AstraZeneca, have vaccines in the pipeline and anticipate eventually adding to those totals. Now, let's talk about stimulus checks. Now, yesterday I told you about how the current relief bill was headed for a full House vote. But if it passes Congress, which it likely will with a Democratic-led House and Senate, when will we see those checks? 
Well, Democrats and Biden want to have the COVID-19 relief plan approved by March 14th. That's when extra unemployment assistance and other pandemic aid expires. But there could still be changes before the bill is passed by the Senate. If the Senate makes any changes to the bill, it would then have to go back to the House for approval again. During the first round of stimulus checks in April 2020, it took about two weeks for the federal government to start distributing the money. It took around one week for the second round of checks worth $600 in early January. So if the IRS is able to keep up with previous time Lines, Americans could start receiving those checks from late March to early April. But one possible complicating factor is that this round of checks will likely be going out while the IRS is dealing with tax returns, so keep that in mind. So why $1,400? Well, the idea is that on top of the $600 provided in the most recent COVID-19 bill, that $1,400 would bring the total to $2,000 that Biden previously called for. And what else is in the package? Well, about $40 billion would go directly to fighting the pandemic while the rest is focused on economic relief. About $20 billion would be set aside for a more disciplined focus on vaccination, and Biden's team has called for mass vaccination centers and mobile units sent to hard to reach areas. But what if you haven't received your first or second stimulus check, or what if it wasn't in the right amount? While some $600 second round stimulus check payments may still be in the mail, the IRS said last week that it has issued all of them. So if you didn't get a payment or you didn't get the full amount, you may be able to claim a recovery rebate credit when you file a 2020 tax return. Eligibility for the credit will be based on your 2020 tax year information. If you need more information on that, check out the link in the description of this video. And before I go, let me share with you a story that will make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Meet Skipper. The Neal Veterinary Hospital in Oklahoma City is calling the puppy a miracle after being born with a combination of congenital conditions. Skipper has one head and chest, but was born with six legs, two pelvic regions, two lower urinary tracts, two reproductive systems, and two tails. Despite her unique appearance, Neely Veterinary Hospital said at four days old, Skipper has survived longer than any other dog on record with her congenital conditions. The hospital also said Skipper actually appears to be in great shape and is nursing well and growing appropriately. I just want to hold that cute, sweet pup, but that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you're in the loop.